Tim Johnson is not your typical artist. He lists the Beastie Boys as one of his major influences, and has depicted everything from 90s rappers to comic book characters in his art. This month, Johnson brought that particular brand of art to a town that has recently embraced creators who pushed the boundaries of food, drink, fashion, and much more in recent years. That town is Hudson. I think I kind of try to call it street art for, uh, street art for the home because um, I try to, a lot of it's graffiti inspired, but not, um, you know, not very wild things. I mean, it's, I guess some of it's a little out there, but um, I try to do stuff that you could kind of hang almost anywhere in your house, as long as you're a little bit funky. You know, I do a lot of different colors, so almost any of this would blend anywhere, but a lot of it is with an eye towards uh, interior design, yet still, you know, pop art and graffiti sensibility to tie it all together, so. Johnson is no townie. Rather, he moved to Hudson just this year, seeking to find a home after a breakup. It was, in fact, from that headspace that he committed to selling more of his art than ever before. A lot of this art was made over the course of the past 10 years, but I never really got out there to sell it. I've been selling word of mouth this whole time, but now I just feel like it's time to do it. And um, the storefront was open, it happened to be owned by a friend of mine, and it all uh, just worked out well. And uh, yeah. And even as his art covered the walls around him and fetched $100 price tags, Johnson admitted his path towards such visual, visual creativity has been a long and jagged one at best. He first put pencil to paper as a child, doodling scenes from his favorite Garfield comics. When it came time to choosing a college, however, he opted to attend Boston University and study film. I made a couple of short films. I helped produce um, a movie with um, Adrian Grenier from, um, he played Vinny Chase on HBO's Entourage, so we made a movie with him that played on some short festivals, but kind of got sick of doing that. It was, wasn't as much fun as I wanted it to be. From there, he turned to music, eventually settling on rap. He performed using his Smashing Pumpkins song inspired AOL username as his pseudonym, Soma79. Four out of five rappers don't know if they should snitch, if they are really rich, what it means if to you be don't a bitch. Drink beer every day before noon, then you're I play in Boston, Middle East, um, Brighton Music Hall, places like that. I, um, I uh, really enjoyed it. I get to open for people like Onyx and Warren G and Ari the Rugged Man and like uh, Slane and Ill Bill. It was a great experience. But As he had tired of film, however, Johnson also grew disenchanted with rap, saying the lack of legitimate rap fans in the Boston scene frustrated him. Seeking an outlet, he finally returned to drawing and other forms of visual art. Um, my friends used to come to our hip-hop shows. They were always drawing with paint markers, so I just bought some and I just started. And um, the first piece I did was just the drawing of the Punisher from Marvel Comics and came out good. So I did an Aquaman one, a Daredevil one, and then I just started expanding more and more. And it started by copying other people's artwork, but then now I, I really can draw almost anything. By then running with art, he began creating in a near fever pace in 2015 as a challenge to himself after struggling to accurately paint a portrait of action star Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I put it down, and that was right around New Year's, and I made a resolution that I draw a portrait every day for a year. So I drew 365 portraits in, in 2015, and it got me, that's what I needed to do to get better. Like, that was a huge step forward for me. And once I did that, I realized that it was almost a compulsion for me, and I, I've been working on art almost every day since. Johnson's pop-up show, advertised under his Soma 79 name, generated buzz long before he opened his doors, and drew customers off the Hudson streets throughout the Columbus Day weekend. Now that that pop-up show is behind him, though, Johnson is excited to continue growing his art career here by selling to neighbors and hosting further events in the future, in a town that he says has already embraced his style of creativity. So I just want to be somebody that people in town can come to with any ideas they have. I mean, I hope you'd think that if you saw this stuff that I could do pretty much any, if you have an idea, you know, I might not be able to replicate the Sistine Chapel ceiling, but I can pretty much do probably anything you want to do. And I think that was sort of part of the message I wanted to make is that no matter what your tastes are, whatever, no matter what your, your price range is, I can probably do something for you. So, you know, I have prints, paintings, anything. It's like, I'll be working on this stuff whether anybody buys it or not. So, you know, my, my apartment's getting pretty cramped. So, you know. <laughs>